So thanks so much for everyone joining us here today on our second episode of Passion for Success by Sarah's Platinum. And it is to here to empower women through knowledge. And today's topic is overcoming adversity. And there's no better person to talk to, <laughs> Allie Krieger, for everything that she has overcome and continues to overcome. Um, you are a two-time World Cup champion, yes. also won a silver, and you're looking forward to winning your first gold next year, also a member of the Orlando Pride. So thanks for joining us today, Al. Um, yeah, of course. Thanks for having me. So I think so much of who a person becomes, it starts in your childhood. So tell me mm -hmm. a little bit of what it was like for you growing up in your household. Obviously, your, your family is so supportive of you and, and what has kind of helped you to become the person that you are today? Oh, wow. Um, so much. I mean, I grew up luckily in such an active family. Both of my parents um, played college sports and my dad played professional soccer. And um, so I was, you know, my brother and I were super active growing up, which I, I loved that because it helped me, you know, just start off on the right foot with just this healthy lifestyle and good perspective of staying active and, you know, getting out of the house and um, playing team sports. And I think that's, um, and making friends on those team sports and kind of having this uh, mentality, this drive uh, right from the beginning. Um, I always wanted to be like my brother and play every sport that he played and, you know, every activity. So I think from the very beginning, I was, um, you know, living that type of lifestyle and really excited about going to school. And I had everything kind of at my fingertips, um, you know, growing up in Northern Virginia. Um, I, I loved my childhood. I played volleyball, basketball, soccer, um, you know, just hung out in the neighborhood and played, you know, all those fun games um, like jailbreak. And I'm sure a lot of you remember. Um, and just like staying active and yeah, so my childhood was really great. Um, I played on a club team called the Sparklers from age seven to age 18 and my dad was my coach. And um, that was also like an interesting dynamic. I know we'll probably talk about that, but you know, being surrounded by really good players at a young age, I just felt lucky. Um, because I don't know if I would be in the same position now if I didn't start out in that atmosphere, in that environment. So playing with really good players when I was seven years old and eight of us stuck together the whole time until we were 18 and went off to college. So a lot of my teammates ended up going to D1 schools and playing. And I mean, so I think I was so grateful for that opportunity, you know, on the Sparklers winning state championship after state championship and um, being exposed to really good players and really good teams and being challenged in that way when I was really young really helped get to me to, you know, get me to this level, but also just in general with like certain life skills, you know, being challenged in other ways as well and learning how to be a part of a team sport and um, being a good teammate, being a good person and surrounding myself with really good people and players. I think that was, I'm, I'm just grateful, you know, for my parents to put me in that situation when I was really young. Well, you kind of touched on it a little bit. My, my dad actually played college basketball and he was my basketball coach and would always have me go out in the the back trying to work on my skills and he was yes. harder on me than other players and obviously I gravitated towards soccer for that reason mm -hmm. um so talk about your dad being your coach and what that dynamic was like <laughs> I mean like at times I, I would have to say listen like I need you to be my dad now um and not my coach I need I need you know your dad advice and I need your dad support and and kind of like separate the two because I think we had to kind of figure out that dynamic um my connection with him has always been soccer um obviously throughout the years he's so you know proud and supportive of my life and everything like that but mainly our connection is soccer so I feel like at the beginning, I, you know, we kind of had to set those boundaries and say, listen, like, I need to talk to you as my dad. I need, I need soccer to kind of stay out of it right now for this specific, I don't know, thing I'm, I'm struggling with or whatever. Um, so honestly, um, at, you know, when I was around six or seven, you know, my parents, or sorry, 11 or 12, my parents had separated. 
And that was like in middle school years. And that was really like my prime time as an individual and a human being to really develop. And I really struggled. Um, through that time, my brother and I, you know, when my dad left, um, not knowing where, you know, he really was, luckily he was my coach because I saw him twice a week at training or three times a week at training. So like, you know, there's a bit of a struggle there. Um, but I was grateful he was my coach for that reason. So I could see him and, you know, we could do kind of have that bond, um, through soccer. So I think that's why it was really great that he was my coach for that specific reason you know I saw him more often than I, I could outside of outside of soccer because if he wasn't my coach I don't know how often I would you know see him so that was um you know a kind of separate experience but I would have to you know he would push me he was he molded me into a really good player at a young age um he's a great he's a phenomenal soccer coach um you know, our team was so good when we were like seven, we're doing like one twos around people. I mean, it's like, you know, when you first get out there and you play club soccer, we're actually, we're winning championships, we're winning games. We, we knew what it felt like to win and be successful. Um, you know, and then through our losses, we just, he pushed us to then learn what we did wrong and then get better at it and improve. And I think um, he was that type of coach that really was so knowledgeable about the game and broke the game down. Uh, for us at such an early age or such a young age to make make it you know make sense and I think that was really beneficial for me um, the dad part of it yeah I wish we had more experiences as you know a father daughter outside of soccer but I'm grateful on the other end of that to have that experience anyway um, so I did struggle with that younger you know like I felt like he was more just my coach mm -hmm. at times um, but, you know, it, it is what it is. And, you know, I, I just took those opportunities and really tried to uh, enjoy that quality time on the field. And even till this day, like, you know, I can call him up and ask him any questions about, you know, what did you think about this game or that game or this clip or that clip, you know, and he'll give me feedback as like a coach. Um, and then I'm like, okay, coach can be a side and I, now I want to tell you about my wedding or, you right. know, things like that relationship and dogs and things like that. Yeah, it is a very interesting dynamic. Uh, if you can, because um, I went through my parents divorced as well, just talk about how you were able to kind of deal with that circumstance. Yeah, it's obviously hard and I'm sure a lot of us have dealt with it. Um, I really struggled because I mean, my mom was both, you know, my mom and my dad, like during my high school years, really. And um, she was so, you know, so strong through that whole um, period and when they weren't, you know, as happy as they could have been. Um, I never really saw them like argue or fight, which I was grateful for. Um, but, you know, the absence that I experienced as my dad not being there, I think, you know, I struggle with today, but that's what therapy is for. And, um, we, you know, we have good conversations now, you know, and, um, it's nice to really uh, have those discussions and be open. And, and I think communication is like key for everyone. I think, um, being vulnerable and, you know, telling, you know, your parents how you're really feeling. Um, but I think in that situation, you don't have to be a product of that environment. You can work on being a better person and, really growing and learning from that experience and I have tried in my life to know um, you know take little things that are great for my childhood and that experience of my parents divorce but also you know learning from that divorce and learning what I can do better in my life and in my relationships and uh, with family friends and also my wife so I feel like um, that's why maybe I've married late later than than normal and I wanted to make sure that it was one time and it was gonna that would be it and that would be my person and um, I think I really take care of that um, and I think you know my friendships as well because um, trust is a huge thing for me and um, that feeling of like maybe being abandoned like that abandonment feeling and really making sure the people in my life are there to stay and um, that I can trust them. And so I think, you know, that takes, it's taken a lot of work to get to this place, but I'm sure you have similar feelings. Um, 
but yeah, I think we all kind of go through this, but the one important thing I can take from it is that you don't have to be the product of that environment growing up. You can change that and you can make it better and you can make it what you want um, and what your values are and, and what you believe in. So nothing, nothing is right and wrong, right? It's just how you feel and, and who you love and what you envision your life to be. I love that. Um, you know, you were able, to, like many girls, to have the opportunity to play in college soccer. And yeah. Penn State, and there were actually complications. And you had said at one point that you never thought you would play soccer again. So tell us yeah. a little bit about what happens and what you learned from that injury. Um, that I was 21 years old, and unfortunately it was like three days before I'm sure everyone here has already, you know, knows the whole story. Um, so I won't go on too much about it, but just to kind of cut it short, we were playing in a, in a game against our club boys team, preparing for that Friday night game. Um, uh, who were we playing? It doesn't matter, but um, another team in Pennsylvania. Anyway, uh, it was the first round in NCAA tournament and we were ranked number one that year. Um, in, in college soccer, which was like huge for Penn State. And so uh, that Wednesday at training, I got taken down by one of the, one of the guys and uh, unfortunately kind of knew that right away, it, the injury was pretty bad. So um, unfortunately I had to like, you know, go right to the hospital, found out what every, you know, everything was, had surgery that Friday, but then, you know, I had a great recovery with the exception of then you know, experiencing, I flew to the final four with the team. So this was November 6th or so. I flew to the final four with the team early December. And I don't know if that was like too early or what was, you know, affected it. I was on, you know, birth control medicine at the time, um, flights, uh, going to and from like my uh, mom's house and my dad's house over Christmas, really like my mom was getting married that year to, um, you know, my former stepfather. So it just was like a lot going on, but I was making the trips to go there. So it was the medica the medication, the flights, and um, just the surgery itself formed these blood clots that I was experiencing at my mom's wedding. I was in a wheelchair because I couldn't walk. So it was just easier to get around that way um, because it was down in Florida. We were like at this beach resort, whatever, um, besides the point. So I started feeling the shortness of breath. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, told her and I was like, listen, I got to go back. I got to go back to school because I don't know what's going on. Like, I'm not feeling right. I know there's something wrong. Well, I fly back to school. And at that time I was dating this guy who um, played football, but he was in med school. So he knew, he knew, like, I think this is pretty serious. Before you go to bed, you need to like, we need to go to the hospital. Like, I, I don't know if you should like go to sleep. And so I went to the hospital they like next thing I know my coach is there the dean of the school is there um the president uh our you know athletic director everyone was like there so that I knew something was like serious and so I had multiple blood clots form in my lungs and in my heart and my and it started in my leg the the where the injury was um my right fibula so that was a bit scary long story short we get to a point where I had to stay a week in the hospital that's the moment that I was thinking, well, am I ever going to, am I ever going to be able to like run again? Am I ever going to be able to play? Like this is my junior year. I was into like, you know, my senior year, the following year, like what's, what's going to happen. So I don't know. It just was a really shitty experience. And it was a real down to earth moment where I was like, okay, shit's real. And then like, I need to put stuff in, in perspective and I really need to think about like my life and what I want to do. And first of all, it's getting healthy and, and, and then get, being able to walk again. I mean, meanwhile, I'm still, you know, uh, injured and I still can't walk for 13 weeks. I'm on my, you know, like spiral fracture, my fibula. So I'm thinking, okay, when I have blood clots and I'm dealing with my spiral fracture, this is like a mess. Um, so what do I do first? Right. It's like, how am I going to overcome this? So yeah, I get out of the hospital and then it's literally one day at a time. Um, the team actually, uh, like they got me this like electric scooter. So that was, that was the highlight <laughs> of the whole experience. Um, so 
so I was I was like on this electric scooter scooter which actually got stolen off of our front porch which is embarrassing but um that's a whole nother story anyway but I ended up you know coming back returning I had to give myself like these Lovenox shots into my stomach every day for like a certain amount of time because they're blood thinners I mean it was like it was one of the worst experiences of my life but I took one day at a time. I knew that I wanted to get back out on the field. And that's kind of where my focus was every day was, you know, I need to show up for my doctor's appointments. I need to stay off my feet. I need to eat healthy. I need to mentally just, I don't know, stick to what I can control. And that was school. That was being around good people who were going to inspire me to like, just get back out on my feet. Uh, I, I really had to like learn how to walk again and everything. So it, it was a tough, it was a tough go, but um, I watched the team get all the way to the semifinal. We lost to Portland, of course, Pino's team at the time. Um, yeah, they uh, beat us in PKs, but I was there on the sidelines, so that was good. Um, obviously, that was before, you know, the hospitalization, but I don't know, just all the good little things that I tried to keep in perspective. And, and then I stayed through the summer and did an internship and then was in preseason that next fall because, or, you know, in August or September, whenever it was, um, just to stick, you know, because I stuck to that plan. So I'm hearing from you just controlling the controllables, you know, and, yeah. and doing what you can to get up there in the field and yeah. take easy steps. Um, yeah. And you're able to do that. So, you know, we're going to fast forward a little bit after Penn sure. State you decided to go to, to Germany to play. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of went factored into your decision to, to go over there? And then obviously you don't speak the language. So what's some, what's some of the adversity that you had to face once you got there? Yeah, it, that's a great question. Um, so I decided to go to Germany because that summer I played uh, with the U23s in the Nordic Cup, which was in Vasa, Finland at the time. And there were a lot of European coaches there. At that time, we didn't have a league. Uh, so I was either going home and playing with my guy friends from like high school twice, a, twice a week, like playing pickup, or I, I was taking the path to try and put myself in the best situation to make the national team, the full team, because that's where I wanted to be. So I thought at that time, listen, like I can't just sit on my ass at home and hope to get to the national team when, you know, when you Heather too were obviously playing on the team forever and you guys had residency and the team is set right so it's like how can I put myself in a situation where I can be seen and get better at the same time and just improve all around uh, as a player because I'm not good enough now so how can I be better to get there and it was a risk um one of the one of the teams or sorry one of the agents there had reached out to me and said I can like you know a couple teams have have talked to me about wanting you to come play and I said well like they have leagues over there you know like like that's how like ignorant I was about the professional teams in, in Europe um at that time I'm 23 right it's like you go to college and you hope to make the national team like that was just the goal right um and so I, I decided okay I'll yeah like well, what else do I have to do right I, I want to get further in my career and I want to continue to play so let me go over I'll pack my two bags I show up in Frankfurt it was either Frankfurt Sweden um, maybe there was an opportunity in France at the time but I, I just chose Frankfurt because that's where the agent was living at the time um, and I just said sure like I'll come try out I show up and there's like Birgit Prince, Nia Kunzer, um, Silke Rottenberg, um, Saskia Bartusiak, like Sandra Smizek, all these players that you played against um, in the world, just recently in the World Cup in 2007. And I was like, holy shit. I'm like, can I like come hang out? Like, can I come hang out? I mean, I like, I'm just like coming in from the US just thinking, wow, I just watched all these girls play in the World Cup. This is insane. Um, and so seven other German national team players were on that team. So I was like, okay. I like rolled my sleeves up and I was like, this is serious. I got to like figure it out. Um, so I just, Renata Lingor was also on the team. Um, just all these amazing players. Steffi Jones was playing her last season that fall. I was just like so in awe that everybody was there. And, and it was like such a great training atmosphere. I was, be, I was blown away and beyond like happy to, to have that experience. And 
you know, I, I thought to myself, like, um, I can kind of gain this European experience and mix it with my American style and then come up with something of my own, um, something different. Yeah. But it was also a challenge and it was a risk. But that risk led me to my dream job of playing for the national team. So I, I encourage anyone, if you're scared and uncomfortable, that you should do something because you can only grow in that process and it will only make you a better person. And, and obviously in my situation, a better player in order to reach my dream of being on the national team. And I think if I would have never taken that risk, I would have never been sitting here. So it's so important that when you're scared or you're uncomfortable, or you're just kind of like, it's a huge risk. I suggest you take it because I grew so much as a person, even more as, as a player, but as a person, I, I learned a new language. I, I met new friends. I was forced into a new culture of, you know, just food and people and um, just the beautiful architecture in Germany. I mean, I had this whole, it's all by myself. And I just kind of threw myself into the fire and I, I learned so much about myself at that time um, that I never would have learned if I would have just stayed in my little comfy bubble in Northern Virginia, you know? so. It was, it was an unreal experience. And um, that's what my tattoo is all about, that everyone knows about. It's just something I can't really describe, but, but just, I loved it. Well, Al, I think uh, Germany paid off. And yeah. You got this amazing opportunity in yeah. 2011 to go back to Germany. So I know that yeah. had it been even more special for you as a player having mm -hmm. played there, um, mm -hmm. you played out of your mind in that World Cup. And Thanks, one of the best players throughout the entire tournament. Well, so I couldn't have done it without you. And wow. watching you play over the years was incredible for me. So I'm, I'm forever grateful for the, your support and having you as a teammate and just you talking to me every game. It was incredible. So you're the best. Well, you're super sweet for saying that. Um, I want to know, like, what was going on in your head? Like, what was your mindset during that tournament? Don't fuck up. <laughs> like literally I have Chrissy Rampo next to me I have like Abby you know just like screaming at everybody I mean you know how it is but you're just like uh like don't kick it out of bounds um I think I I was just and like you know Hayo's in front of me like I'm just like okay I gotta like relax Boxy and Carly are you know controlling the midfield and I'm just like I just give it to them literally find Hayo find Carly you know just like get it up the field but keep the ball um but no I, in all seriousness I wanted to just take it all in because obviously it was my first World Cup and um in the place that I absolutely loved and that I wanted to share with all of you because of how much I loved it and how much it meant to me. And I think just being in, in a really beautiful place and culture and with the, the people that were there, um, that experience and then having friends and family, I mean, you kind of have to just like make sure to kind of bundle all of that up in a controlled manner to be able to then just perform freely. It's hard to explain, but like there's so much excitement outside that you have to really like kind of bundle that up and use that energy and that happiness um, to play freely and to still have fun and enjoy it. And um, I don't think I was as nervous because of obviously the players surrounding us at the time during the tournament. I mean, you look around and you're like, I have the best teammates in the world and they're so badass and so good that I know that they have my back. So during that experience, that whole time, no matter who was playing, I mean, they were gonna absolutely crush. So I think just balling up that energy and all of that, out, all of those outside factors and kind of just hone in on what you really need to focus on, which is just play your game, um, play with intention and, um, kick ass and and yeah don't fuck it up well you did all those things so <laughs> um so fast forwarding because obviously you're at that point you're playing the best soccer of your life and you're looking yeah. forward to the 2012 olympics yeah um and you know when you tore your acl it my heart was broken for you because yeah i know i know what that's like um right so just tell me kind of, what was your thinking at, at that point in your career? 
yeah so that was like and it was like right before halftime and we were winning like seven nothing remember it was like yes it was awful and you're in the the tackle I took a shot like boxy laid me a ball off I took a shot and like this girl just comes in and just kicks the shit out of my knee and I was just like oh that hurts that hurts and I know there's something wrong um like, and I think I was coming out at halftime, which was the worst part about this whole thing. It was like literally like a second. I don't know. Anyway, it happened. And at that moment, I was like, shit, like, I feel so good. We're going into the Olympics. You know, we have to win this tournament, but we're going into the Olympics with um, this like motivation to want to win it because we lost in the final. And I'm feeling really good. I'm playing well. Um, I don't know. I'm game fit. I'm, I'm just like into it. And then all of it just gets like pushed aside. It's just gets, you know, just cut right underneath the view. So then you have to start back at stage zero. Um, so that was really difficult. Um, but I think just like what I learned through that other injury at Penn state, you got to just control what you're able to control. So then I made it, um, I actually after surgery had to go right back to Germany because I needed for insurance reasons, but I was really happy there because I was in a facility where they had a lot of the men's professional players come to specifically in Frankfurt. Um, so you had other men's, you know, uh, injured players from other teams in the Bundesliga. And then you had some female players there and you would go from nine to five and I would have lunch there and I would have, you know, a massage um, treatment, like uh, the physio part of it. And then I would have the workout part of it. So until I got back out on the field, I had to stay there, but it was actually really motivational because I was around my team. Mm -hmm. I feel like if I was here, you know, in the States where we don't, we didn't have a league at the time, or I wasn't a part of a team, it would be really difficult for me to like, want to get back. It's like, it would be so, I would be going into national team camps and then doing half my stuff at home. It just wouldn't be as controlled and it wouldn't be as professional. So I felt like it was a really good situation for me and I came back better than I ever dreamed of and I came back stronger fitter faster um just better mentally emotionally everything so going through that experience yeah was it tough it it sucked like honestly I I was like I don't know if I can do this at times and then you know you go through that with a lot of injuries but literally I was just like this is so annoying and then having to you know because I was wanting to get back for the Olympics but I knew that was probably not gonna happen but I just had that in my mind like maybe I can get back in five months like come on it took me 14. Yeah but I think that's good to have like yeah. that goal in mind to propel you but right. on the days that were bad tell us what what you did to work through those. Um it was really hard to get up and to want to go I would not be in the best of moods but that's okay I was like okay today's not gonna be a great day. I'm going to feel shitty and that's fine. I'm going to work through it and I'm going to have all these feelings and I'm going to feel it and I'm going to fight it and I'm just going to deal with it as best I can. But I knew the end result. If I pushed through those hard days and those mentally tough days and physically tough days that I would be even that much better. And in the back of my mind, I always, I always said, there's someone out there training faster, harder, stronger than you right now. So you better, if you want to make the next world cup, or you, you just want to put your boots back on and play, you know, in a, in a game with Frankfurt, you need to like get your ass up and like take this serious. So, you know, that's what I did. And I was like, I want to play. This is like, this is me. This is what I was meant to do. So I need to like figure it out. And, and this is what I want to do. It's what, what brings me so much joy is to just play football. So, um, I knew, yeah, but you're allowed to have bad days. You don't always have to have a good day. There's no, like, it's, it's okay, but you just have to, like, make sure you're feeling those feelings and you just, like, kind of deal with them and um, go through that process and, yeah, and you just do it. Well, you're human, you know? Yeah, and exactly. We are, and we all go through that. So I just kind of want to get your perspective. Obviously, you're able to come back from that injury and you're able to be a part of the first team to win a women's yeah. World Cup since 1999. Um, and yeah. that was such a huge accomplishment. Mm -hmm. um, not long after that, you know, Pia is no longer the coach, Jill takes yeah. over. And we all kind of saw like you weren't getting the invites in anymore. And all yeah, after the World Cup with her, yeah. And asking why. Um, 
how did you how did you deal with that how did you deal with that that had to have been so frustrating but how do you deal with just the fact that she makes that final call how can you control what you can control yeah it was it was quite odd um if i'm honest like i know this is like a safe space but it was quite odd because you know going through playing um, in the 2015 World Cup, almost every minute, but nine minutes, I guess, against Colombia for her. And um, not for her, but like, you know, as, as my coach at the time. And then going through the victory tour with her and like everything, and it seemed great up until 2017, where there was just like a halt. It was like all of a sudden, or sorry, Olympics, 2016 Olympics, everything changed. And I didn't quite understand why you would um, fix something that wasn't broken. Um, but hey, like, it's fine. Um, you got to deal with it. Not every coach is going to value you. I understand that. Um, but there were a lot of changes, too. Um, so I think I just had to go through that process and say, listen, like, I just got to work my hardest. I got to control what I want to control again. And not not take this personally as in like you know I know how good I can be but this might not have anything to do with me it has everything to do with her and um you know not every coach is going to value you so you have to just control you and your work ethic and your attitude every single day because out at training we have the best of the best right you have to be almost perfect I mean you you understand this it's like you have to show up and it's so mentally, emotionally, physically um, daunting at times because you're giving everything into that session. Everything you've learned, everything you've experienced, everything, every single moment counts in every training session. And it is, it's amazing, but it's also exhausting at this level, right? Because you're, you're, you're playing with the best players in the world and over a 10 year period. So I think you can't allow one person to tell you uh, how valuable you are. So through that process, I learned a lot, especially after she didn't call me in anymore. Um, I didn't play a minute in the 2017 Tournament of Nations, which was, you know, quite shocking to me. I was really disappointed, I have to say, um, because there was, ever, there was never any why. Like, it was like you, you break up with someone and, you know, you don't have closure because you don't understand why they broke up with you. It's like just like at least tell me so I can go home and work on like myself or work on something that I need to work on. It's like, I didn't even get that. Like there was no, it was just like a few things here and there that just, I, I, yeah, I didn't really understand. So it was difficult because emotionally I wasn't, I was, I knew that I was good enough to be there still. And like no one was really beating me out of my position. So it was difficult to have an understanding of, of why, like, why was I sitting at home? And, and so then I stopped kind of thinking that way and said, listen, like, I'm going to be the alley that I'm always going to be, no matter if I'm wearing the red, white, and blue or the purple. So like, I'm going to figure it out. Like, I'm, you know, I'm going to just, you know, speak with actions. Right. So I had one of the best seasons of my career in 2017 when we made it to the semifinals against Portland and I was so confident and I was just like, listen, like I'm going to be the same person, whether I put on, you know, an Orlando pride Jersey or a U.S. national team Jersey, you're going to get the same from me every single game, every single day, like every single training session, it's not going to be like, you know, wavering. So it was difficult, but then I put all my energy into other things. I then started AKFC and my company. I then, um, you know, just put more time into my family, my friends that I hadn't for so long that I had sacrificed for 10 years. Um, so I was able to do things outside of soccer that I've always wanted to do, um, which was actually really nice. And I think that mentally helped me to then prepare again to be my best. So it was a tough time. You go through, you go through shit. Um, even if you don't understand it, like you can't allow other people to tell you how good you are at something. And I just kind of, I just tried to focus on me. And I knew that maybe at the end, the door would be cracked. Um, and if I got my toe in there, a big toe in there, it would be end of story. You got your big toe in there, Al. I uh, really did. You got the call in. So... 
I felt like there probably had to be a lot of pressure. You know, you're you're trying yeah. basically trying out for that World Cup team. You hadn't been called mm-hmm. in forever. So what was your mentality at that point? I almost like sidebarred it, the call. You know, I almost said, you know what? I'm on a good path. I don't know if I can do this, ladies. <laughs> Um, I'm so glad you did do that. I, yeah, no, I'm just kidding. Um, but I really had like have to think about like and mentally prepare myself again because I don't know if any of you really have. I mean, you you, you don't understand and and uh, but it's really hard to explain like the mentality piece and the emotional piece that you have to have being on this team and being in this atmosphere and environment every single day. Um, and. and it's really hard to explain it, but I think um, I had to take like 24 hours. I mean, right away I was like, okay, great. Like, yeah, like I'm, you know, like I'm here for the team. Like I'm ready to go. Like, I mean, it's been, it's a little late, but I'm ready. <laughs> um, so I of course said that, right. It's like, you, I'm here for the team. I'm here for her and the staff. Like I'm ready to go. Like, let's do this. I'm ready to go win. Um, but honestly, I had to take like some time to myself and really get back into that moment. And Mitzi, I know you know this, but it's like mentally draining and emotional and the physicality of it was no issue, obviously. But the, the, the mentality piece was like, do I want to go back to that? Like, am I ready? Mm-hmm. Um, it's been two years, but like, I need to like kind of view it differently. And because I was in a different space in a more positive space in my life, I was able to set better boundaries in that environment, if that makes sense. Yeah. So speaking of that positive space that you were in, what would be your advice to others to get to that place? Um, obviously, just try not to allow others to tell you how good you are at something. Um, be really confident in yourself, but just control your attitude and how hard you work, um, because those are the things that matter most. Um, kind of block out all that negative negativity. I mean, people can say whatever they want. Like, that doesn't bother me, right? Like, I've been through the worst of the worst with, you know, my job and family and, you know, other things going on that nothing really, nothing can really break me at this point. <laughs> um, and so I just feel like if I could say some, say something would be like, yeah, just to not allow someone to tell you how valuable you are and um, just to believe in yourself. And if you really want to do something, you can definitely achieve it with hard work and a good attitude. And most importantly, I couldn't have done it without my teammates and obviously my wife, first and foremost, and maybe my two puppies. But um. I couldn't have done it without her pushing me and I couldn't have done it without my teammates and friends. So surround yourself with good people who are gonna support you in every aspect of your life. Because if not, like you need to weed those people out and weed them out quick because it's not gonna work and it's not worth it. So like find your group and find your people, whether that it's at the workplace, whether that's in your day-to-day life, in your family even, if they don't support you and in, in your entirety and in, in your goals and your dreams and things like that, it's, it's a no go for me, sis. I'm like, see ya. Like, hi. Good luck. Yeah. Um, I want to know what it feels like to become a two time World Cup champion and <laughs> also to finally get that 100th cap. Yeah. Thank you guys for all the support through that. I mean, that was like incredible. I mean, that's something else. Like in 2017, I was like, really? Two caps? Like, is this a prank? Is this a prank? Um, And that's when I thought at times it was personal, right? So it was hard not to think that it wasn't personal at the time. So um, having to go through all of that and then her calling me back in, I was really grateful for that opportunity. And I was grateful that... um, they allowed me to come back in and complete that. Not that it's about numbers, right? It's not about numbers, but for me over that time period, um, it was important just to feel complete maybe in that, in that moment. Um, and I feel like that whole game and like the way the play, the players wanted it 
for me more than my teammates wanted it for me more than I did, I think. Um, and they were just like, I love that picture, Al. Yeah, they were like, you can tell like that not only was it a special moment for you, but you could see the support from your teammates. Yeah. Every day in the morning, leading up to the game, like even like days before during just the training camp, they were like, how many games do we have? How many games do we have? We're almost there. You know? And I'm like, focus on like the set, like the exercise, like you guys relax. Um, but they were like so supportive and so happy and just, uh, it was such a great moment. I'm so thankful and grateful that uh, she gave me that opportunity again. Well, Krieger means warrior. And you mm-hmm. are. Um, you live by that every Thanks, day. Krieger. We are truly inspired Thanks. by you, Al. And I Thank am so you. glad that you were able to join us today. We're going to continue yeah. to work for you. Um, Thank you. For the Orlando Pride, um, with you and Ash, oh, and yeah. everything else. Um, we have so many more questions we would love to ask you, but unfortunately, we're out of time for today. So 